We're going to make a start. Uh, I want to, first of all, welcome you all to the rally today, which is Fighting to End Women's Oppression. And this is hosted by the Committee for Workers International, CWI, CWI and the Socialist Party, which is a CWI section in England and Wales. My name is Issei, and I am a member of the Socialist Party National Committee, and I'll be chairing the rally this, um, this afternoon. So we've got a great lineup of speakers le um, from leading positions from different sections of the CWI. We will be hearing the struggles that are taking place in those countries and discussing a socialist and internationalist approach in ending gender-based oppression. If you are watching this on social media, please take a moment to share the link, start a watch party and to tag your friends. And so just do that. Um, for us as socialists, um, International Women's Day is not just a day to celebrate being a female, but rather to remember all the struggles that have taken place against women's oppression. And most importantly, today is about redoubling our determination to fight like hell for the living, for, for our rights, for our lives and our livelihood. The COVID pandemic has exposed all forms of inequality that exist in capitalism. We have seen how the pandemic has disproportionately affected working class people. And in that, particularly working class women, they are oppressed based on gender and class have been bearing the burden of the health, economic and social crisis. Cuts in jobs and in services like healthcare, social care, childcare, have meant that many working class women as primary carers for children and elderly had been particularly affected. This on top of low pay, overcrowded accommodation, unsafe working condition, has meant that globally, working class and young women have been pushed to dire condition. But we are also seeing them at the forefront of many struggles that are taking place. And there certainly hasn't been no shortages of struggles, even during the pandemic. Key and essential workers have been fighting for health and safety in workplaces. Here in Britain, uh, teachers and support staff have fought the government uh, against the unsafe opening in schools. We're now seeing healthcare workers fighting for a pay rise continuously and the anger that is accumulating at the announcement on the budget that they are only going to get 1% pay rise. We're also seeing movements for abortion rights in Argentina, in Poland, we're seeing NSAR's movement in Nigeria, where women have, um, are at the forefront. We're also seeing struggle for democracy in Hong Kong and the general strike movement against the military coup on Myanmar. We also see movements and uprising against military dictatorial regimes like in Algeria, Sudan and Belarus. We're also seeing uh, movements against religious run institution, for example, the recent mother and babies home scandal in Ireland, in the north and in the south. And there are many more uh, to say. And this year's International Women's Day also, um, is also marked by the 150th anniversary of the birth of Rosa Luxemburg, one of the history's foremost revolutionaries. And reading Rosa's work, particularly on reform, and, or, reform or revolution, has helped many, including me, to draw the conclusion that we need to get rid of this rotten, exploitative, divisive system, capitalism. Now, the CWI has a proud history in fighting against women's oppression. And our section internationally intervened in all struggles against all oppression. But we link that with a, with a program that unites the working class against capitalism for a fundamental socialist change in society. We will now hear from our speakers. And the first speaker is Rashmi from the New Socialist Alternative India. And she is a member of the Chennai committee. So Rashmi. 
hello comrades uh, good afternoon and uh, it is really nice to see all of you present here today and yeah good evening to all those who have joined from india today uh, so the topic given to me is uh, women's role in the recent moment in india uh, so basically we all know like just like comrade uh, is i mentioned uh, many faced a really difficult situation during the uh, covid pandemic uh, india and many other countries across the world uh, uh, led into i mean uh, were put into unprecedented uh, changes uh, we i mean uh, the Mod modi shah regime uh, uh, put us into an unprecedented unplanned lockdown without any preparation of any sort uh so uh during this point uh, many were affected uh so one particular group were the migrant laborers they were the very first uh, a, a few who got really affected because they had to travel uh, for so long they were not arranged any transportation to take uh, to take them to to their homelands so they had to travel uh i mean uh, they had to march to their hometowns and uh, they were located in a very far away distances they had to march for so long uh, many women lost their lives during uh, this scenario and uh, uh, it is not just them it is not just the migrant laborers uh, the frontline workers also faced many such kind of issues it is not just them it workers women of different professions uh, underwent such kind of problems uh, so uh, when talking about the transportation women who work from who had to work from home at that particular point had to uh, simultaneously take care of the household chores india is uh, so this may be the case in anywhere in the country india is still so regressive so they talk about women empowerment and so many other stuff india is still now very regressive and patriarchal uh, women uh, had to take care of household chores and they also had to you know uh, work uh, regress shifts like uh, there was there was no question of eight hours per day everyone uh, even i was a victim of that even i had to work for 12 hours a day and uh, it is not just that uh, many were uh, many underwent pay cuts many were many uh, uh, concerns uh, uh, resorted to the measure of uh, layoffs and uh, india is a perfect example of this cut which gets richer and poor gets poorer i'll say you why uh, because uh, so it is uh, when when uh, ambani's and adani's uh, were getting i mean immense amount of money even if, uh, during every hard they they added on to the bank to their bank accounts but at the same time the petrol price hike is uh, right now per liter we pay around 93 rupees and uh, uh, the fuel the cooking fuel prices have uh, raised high it is around 850 rupees uh, so it is at the same time uh, the poverty line in the urban areas is uh 32 rupees which is around 0.5 dollars 0.5 dollars so you can imagine if a person in urban area gets up to 0.5 rupee uh, 0.5 dollars he is considered above poverty line which is uh, i mean which is the cost of a half a uh, liter milk so that's how the poverty um, that's how the difference is the rich gets richer and the poor gets poorer that's that's the whole thing so let's take into uh, consideration uh, we'll just consider a few scenarios a few examples of how uh, women the role of women in uh, in the re uh, recent past in the recent movements so taking into consideration the kerala in the, the munnar protest where the tea plantation workers i mean uh, those comrades who attended a recent international school in sri lanka would uh, really know about how uh drastic the conditions are in the tea plantation uh, sectors and uh, how the women undergo i mean the worst conditions that the women undergo 
so so similarly in the munar plantation workers which were majorly women uh, were put under immense pressure i mean uh, they worked for around 12 hours a day and they were this was during 2015 and they were paid around 170 to 130 rupees per day uh, so around 5000 women uh, gathered together to protest Uh, so they uh, that this was because uh, every year they get a 20% pay hike i mean uh, not a pay hike 20% bonus which was cut down to 10% uh, so uh, all the women uh, uh, came to the forefront and they uh, uh, gathered for a protest but uh, uh, this protest was uh, widely uh, uh, widely viewed widely uh, got the attention of others because of two main reasons one because they didn't allow men in this protest because they thought it was the women i mean it was really the women who uh, plucked the leaves and uh, they bore the uh, leaves in uh, in the trucks and uh, for the transport and other things the other the other reason uh, this uh, this moment this uh, protest got the attention of others was because uh, Uh, they didn't allow they didn't let the trade unions uh, in their protest it was because they felt the trade unions uh, exploited them more it is also because the trade unions uh, uh, have a key role in uh, deciding the salary of these uh, they uh, uh, they have a key role in deciding the wage of these women uh, 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 government plays a role uh, the trade unions as well as uh, the management are a part of deciding uh, the salary of the uh, plantation workers after a uh, nine day strike uh, they were able to uh, uh, the then chief minister uman shanti had a negotiation with them and uh, their strike was a success after this success many other uh, plantation people plantation in kerala uh, resorted to the same method and uh, uh, in idiki and in vayanad many plantation workers came forward to protest for their rights uh, similarly in bengaluru uh, there's a, a, a textile industry uh, usually in textile industries uh, there won't be any prolonged protests but uh, uh after the covid 19 situation uh, uh the euro clothing company ecc2 which uh, is a refugee textile industry which uh, also you know uh, uh, uh exports uh, clothes to the uh, international clothing brand famously known as h&m uh, uh the uh, the it resorted it resorted to the same method of laying off like uh, it was at the same uh, time when uh, women uh wanted to cling on to whatever they had uh, to whatever uh, they wanted to uh, when we talk about the uh, women's uh, uh, financial independence of uh, independence of women they wanted to cling on to whatever they had uh, this was the only source of uh, money they could ever get so they didn't want to lose their jobs obviously and uh, so they went on a certain protest for uh, this prolonged up to 50 days and uh, it was again mostly it was led by women uh, it was against a reputed manufacturer and an international clothing brand uh, so uh, these uh, supervisors know many things about the women in um, in these areas so one uh, pressure point the supervisors deployed with the women over there was the patriarchal uh, pressure that uh, uh, the families exert on them that was a uh, uh, i mean they resorted to that method they provoked their uh, the men of their women's family and uh, uh, they were so i mean they resorted to all the illegal methods they provoked them uh, but even after that uh, uh, like around 600 members were able to uh, you know were, were able to continue the uh protest and they got up to three times uh the compensation compared to the others who were not able to uh, prolong the protest uh, so uh, in the above mentioned examples we we are able to see that uh, even uh, when women separately protest they are able to uh, uh win for the uh, the rights they won were very small they were uh, 
it is it is seen as a huge milestone it is seen as a huge milestone so uh, what i'm trying to say over here is that uh, if uh, these kind of rallies will help in you know uh, taking uh, guidelines and uh, to know how uh, to give you a picture about uh, what's the ground reality and to take in more support from comrades across the country so uh, we need uh, really more uh, such kind of uh, unions to fight for the women rights thank you thank you rashmi um so you heard from rashmi from the new socialist alternative in india next we have um kara daniel who is the um, militant left in ireland and she is a uh, she's in the central committee as well so kara um thank you uh so low pay and redundancies and the erosion of workers rights are things that are faced by huge numbers of workers across the the globe they're they're a symptom of the system that we live under the system of capitalism where the drive for profits prioritized above everything including workers rights and women workers you know face all of this and further discrimination in the workplace in the south of ireland where i am the gender pay gap is at 14% women make up the majority of part time workers and 65% of those earning the minimum wage are also women i think one thing that's been clearly illustrated since the beginning of the pandemic is that it's the workers that keep society going in times of crisis not the bosses or the billionaires many of who have been classed as like essential workers in industries dominated by women including you know like education healthcare childcare and retail retail workers are some of the lowest paid and have been hit hard already by the pandemic i think we've seen the beginning of what is to come in relation to retail i just like to talk about the example of the debenhams department stores that have shut down in ireland and the uk resulting in thousands of job losses in ireland ex debenhams workers who are mostly women will be marking international women's day tomorrow on picket lines across the country which is where they've been for the last 332 days and counting last april they were informed via email that all of the stores in the south were closing and they were all being made redundant including concession staff this was a loss of more than 1000 jobs debenhams had agreed to a redundancy deal in 2015 uh negotiated with the workers trade union mandate that they'd get a 2 plus 2 redundancy 2 weeks per year of service from the state and 2 weeks per year of service from the company and the company has refused to pay their part of the redundancy so the workers have been picketing the stores in order to prevent the debenhams appointed liquidator KPMG from removing stock until they get what they're owed the battle that they have waged has been determined and commendable from the very beginning when they first began the pickets it was illegal to do so because of the covid legislation uh, restricting public gatherings they their names taken regularly by the gardi who are the irish police their pickets have been consistent they were on picket lines christmas day they've been there overnight they've organized national demonstrations smaller localized protests they've occupied three separate stores all of which are now over and um, the occupation in dublin which i was a part of ended in less than an hour with the guardie coming in and arresting everybody including the shop steward of the store that we were occupying the liquidator KPMG filed an injunction against the pickets which was shamefully granted in under an hour but one of the women who was named in the injunction went into the high court and defended herself against against them and there are that's just some of the examples there are loads more but i definitely run out of time of the determination of that strike you know This is a difficult strike, but it isn't impossible to win. The trade union movement hasn't mobilized to its full potential, it has to be said, but the strike does have huge support among the working class. And when you look at the pe- potential power that does exist within the trade unions, and by, by which I mean the trade union membership, the ordinary workers, if all of those workers were mobilized in support of Debenham strikers, and there's hundreds of thousands of unionized workers in the south of Ireland alone never mind you know international support imagine what a force that would be to be reckoned with i don't really have time to develop that further and there's much more to the strike that i can't cover 
But to finish, I wanted to say like something the Debenham strikers have said since the beginning is that it's not just them that they're fighting for. They're fighting for all workers who are going to be facing the same as what they are somewhere soon down the line. Workers and the working class will be expected to pay the price of the COVID pandemic. So I think it is so important that we do throw our full support behind all workers that are in struggle now and prepare for struggles that are to come. You know, it's great to be able to send the solidarity of the Committee for Workers International to the Debenham strike today. Um, I think it is likely that we will continue to see an increase in strike action taken by the workers who are, have been already paying the price of the pandemic for a year already, many of whom are women workers in already precarious and low paid jobs. And then just as a last sentence, I'd also just like to send our solidarity to crash workers in uh, Queen's University Belfast who are taking industrial action from tomorrow, International Women's Day, they're striking in opposition to attacks to their terms, terms and conditions. So I'll just finish there, thank you. Thank you, Cara. Um, and like you said, if we were to outline every single struggle that we are involved with, there wouldn't be enough time. But I think we all send our solidarity to the Debenham workers taking the action um, there in Ireland. Next, we got Sherry Hamilton from um, Marxist Workers' Party in South Africa, and she is on the executive committee, and she is joining us here today. Sherry, when you're ready. Sherry, can you hear us? I don't know if you can hear me, comrades. Yes, uh, my me. internet connection is very unstable. I keep getting messages that says your connection is unstable. We can hear you, Sherry. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, comrades. Um, I, I want to give a little bit of an historical take on this. struggle for uh, against women's oppression in South Africa because I think we as since the Paris commune but also as uh, comrade Isaiah said that we are celebrating 150 years since the birth of uh, Rosa Luxemburg uh, who was brutally assassinated uh, and her death uh, signif uh, signified a huge setback for the German working class and I just um, you know, in South Africa at that time, uh, diamonds and gold were discovered and women were beginning to enter into uh, the workplace. Uh, until then, many black women in particular were living in rural areas while their male partners were forced to go into the cities, into the cities to work on the mines. But a hundred years later, uh, during apartheid, South African women made many gains uh, in terms of legislation where in the South Africa's constitution, for example, guarantees the full rights to live in dignity, including specific protection for women uh, against discrimination on the grounds of gender, sex, uh, status and uh, marital status and, and, and pregnancy. But fast forward today, and we see that in South Africa, even the president has said that we face another pandemic, and that's the pandemic of gender-based violence. Femicide in South Africa is said to be five times the global average. A woman is murdered every three hours. Only one in 36 rapes are reported, according to official police statistics. And we have a conviction rate of less than 8%. All these statistics saw a sharp increase during the pandemic and continues unabated. So we argue that the social conditions of capitalism are a breeding ground for the sexist attitudes that justify violence against women, including femicide. Gender inequality is rooted in class inequality and in today has become the most unequal country on the planet with estimates that poverty has escalated to 70% of the population. The face of poverty in South Africa is female and black. 
women have been disproportionately affected during the pandemic, accounting for two thirds of the jobs lost. And this was during one of the harshest lockdowns in the world between March and June. And recently in February, when the uh, Minister of uh, Finance announced his budget, the austerity measures introduced represent a war on women because they hurt women the most. The kind of cuts that are envisaged will affect women more than any other sector because of the, the, the cuts in social expenditure in terms of healthcare, education, and local hospitals and clinics that, uh, that will be affected through the, the, uh, the freeze in posts where fewer policemen will be hired and fewer teachers and nurses and so on. So we say that, that working class women, especially, uh, we argue that young people in, during this uh, pandemic, both pandemics were radicalized just before, in fact, the, the, the lockdown. There were many uh, demonstrations, many uh, women were mobilized into action uh, to fight gender-based violence. And we, and we argue that those women uh, who came out in the struggle against gender-based violence, uh, violence should unite with a broader move, a working class movement. We are calling especially on the trade union movement to place itself at the forefront of a joint struggle with women to combat gender-based violence, starting in the workplace, at tackling sexual harassment that is rife there, including exchange for job, sex for jobs. And in the union movement itself, uh, where the same happens. So such a movement must be connected to the, to the pandemic of gender-based violence, uh, genomic conditions in which this violence thrives. A campaign must be led by women trade unionists uh, to, to fight the gender-based violence with the class content that the pre-pandemic pro uh, protests lacked and uh, have been since channeled into safe government commissions uh, and appeals to uh, big business for funding and so on. And we are saying that only uh, the powerful social position of organized workers in the economy can give flesh and blood to these struggles. It is only the working class which has the power to fundamentally transform society, abolishing capitalism and class inequalities Oppression is rooted in. Such a struggle has the potential to serve as a catalyst to revive the labor movement, both in the work workplace, but also on the political plane in a united campaign for a mass workers party on a social program. In, in our struggles recently, we have seen especially the, the most downtrodden workers in the expanded public works pr program who were entrenched just before the pandemic come out repeatedly in demonstrations demanding a, a minimum wage, permanent jobs, uh, and to be reinstated. And this movement uh, is the basis for reigniting the struggle that will uh, be a catalyst to, re to reviving the labor movement uh, in the next period, as we have begun to see uh, in the recent time when the South African Federation of Trade Unions called for a general strike uh, uh, that was very poorly mobilized, but nevertheless represent a huge start uh, for you know, a, a movement that has, a trade union movement that has lagged behind uh, the struggles of workers in this country. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you, comrades. Thank you, comrade. Um, and, thank, um, and thank you for everyone that's watching us so far. If you just joined in, this is a CWI rally for International Women's Day, um, uh, International Women's Day. And so far you have heard speakers from CWI in India, Ireland and South Africa. The next, um, the next uh, speaker is pre-recorded so that we had to put the subtitles in. And it's uh, Pamela Meza Lobas. And she is the Socialismo Revolutionary in Chile who's a, a, again a leading uh, member in the organization. So we're now going to play the video.
becoming soup. Buen día, compañeros y compañeras. Eh, soy Pamela Mesa, miembro de Socialismo Revolucionario, eh, sección chilena del Comité por una Internacional de los Trabajadores. Y en esta ocasión eh, quiero enviar un fraternoso y revolucionario saludo a todas las mujeres del mundo, a todas las mujeres trabajadoras, a las, jóvenes, a las mujeres jóvenes, a la juventud, sobre todo a la juventud chilena, que desde el año pasado han estado a la cabeza del estallido social luchando contra la miseria y la corrupción, la represión que ha venido más de 20, 30 años en este país y que todavía siguen luchando en la primera línea cada semana, cada día eh, en las poblaciones. Un saludo de agradecimiento a todas las mujeres jóvenes de este país que, que luchan. Eh, también a un saludo a las mujeres campesinas y a todas las mujeres del mundo que durante, alrededor del mundo han luchado por, contra la opresión, contra la violencia y contra las desigualdades. Desde que se creó la propiedad privada en el mundo, las mujeres trabajadoras han sido las más explotadas, las más humilladas, las más eh, agredidas, enfrentando malas condiciones de trabajo, con menor remuneración, realizando el mismo trabajo que los hombres y una discriminación por su sexo, una discriminación sexual por su género. Eh, además, las mujeres trabajadoras tienen un doble trabajo, aparte del trabajo en, en, en sus fábricas, en las empresas, tienen el doble trabajo, de, el trabajo doméstico, el cual, por supuesto que no es remunerado, atención a los hijos, por lo tanto, las trabajadoras terminan siendo las primeras que se levantan en la mañana y las últimas que se acuestan por la noche. Eh, durante la pandemia en Chile, las mujeres chilenas dimos y, di y dieron un ejemplo de lucha cuando hubo que acudir en ayuda de, la, de los trabajadores que quedaron sin trabajo, los que quedaron sin dinero para poder alimentarse. Acá en Chile, como en otros países, se organizaron ollas comunes, recolección de alimentos, recolección de remedios, y fueron las mujeres, las mujeres pobladoras en este país, las que lideraron esa actividad social, y lo siguen haciendo hasta el día de hoy, porque la situación de los trabajadores chilenos no ha cambiado en la pandemia. Cada día hay más cesantía, cada día hay más mujeres sin trabajo, que pierden su trabajo, mujeres a veces... Eh, jefas de hogar de las cuales solo su, sus hijos solo dependen de ellas. Por lo tanto, un gran saludo a esas mujeres que día a día están y estamos luchando en ayuda de la clase. Eh, además de luchar por eso, también tenemos que luchar por... Eh, por los derechos sexuales y los derechos de reproducción. Nosotros las mujeres... En América Latina, básicamente en América Latina y en Chile, tenemos que seguir dando la lucha para que nosotros podamos decidir qué es lo que hacemos con nuestro cuerpo. Así como bien lo hicieron las trabajadoras, la juventud, las mujeres en, en Argentina, que ellas a través de su lucha pudieron conseguir que se aprobara y se legislara la ley de eh, suspensión del, del embarazo, o sea, el aborto libre y seguro en Argentina. Ellas ahora pueden optar por, ter, por eh, acceder a un aborto libre y seguro hasta, las, eh, hasta la semana 14 del embarazo y ese servicio lo, lo va a dar el gobierno en forma gratuita y en los hospitales públicos. El, el llamado es para que en toda América Latina, todas las mujeres latinoamericanas podamos tener ese mismo derecho, ya que solo hay cuatro países que tienen el derecho al aborto libre en Chile, y que sería Cuba, eh, Argentina, Uruguay y las... Cuba, Argentina, Uruguay y Guayaba, las Guayabas. Por lo tanto, nosotros tenemos que seguir luchando para que en Chile también podamos acceder a un aborto seguro, considerando que el aborto 
inseguro es una de, las, una de las mayores causales de muerte en América Latina, en los países subdesarrollados de las mujeres. Eh, por otro lado, también quiero, quiero hacer un llamado a las trabajadoras eh, para que nos organicemos, nos organicemos los sindicatos. La lucha de la mujer tiene que ser, es, ha sido y siempre tiene que ser la lucha que da el movimiento obrero. Las necesidades de la mujer tienen que ser parte de la lucha que dan los, damos los trabajadores en contra del sistema, porque la lucha no es de, de género, la lucha es de clase. Todos los trabajadores tenemos que unirnos en forma consciente para luchar contra el sistema capitalista que día a día nos oprime y no nos permite eh, vivir en, en forma digna, a pesar de que somos nosotros los trabajadores quienes producimos la riqueza en este sistema. Hago un llamado a todas, a todas las mujeres del mundo, a todas las mujeres chilenas, a las trabajadoras chilenas, a las trabajadoras de la empresa de correos de Chile, a la cual yo pertenezco. Hace 20 años yo soy trabajadora postal, orgullosa de trabajar en una empresa del Estado, una empresa que puede ser, puede dar mejor servicio y podría ser más eficiente si tuviese la participación real de los trabajadores. Eh, llamo a todas las trabajadoras del mundo a organizarse, a organizarnos en forma consciente para terminar con este sistema capitalista que día a día nos oprime y no nos permite vivir una vida digna, una vida de acuerdo a nuestro tra trabajo y a nuestro sacrificio. La única solución para poder tener una vida sana para nuestros hijos, una vida digna, que nos permita vivir tranquila, trabajar, con la, de, trabajar como corresponde, tener los derechos, los derechos de igualdad de trabajo, igualdad de salario, basta de discriminación a la mujer, basta de tener menos, menos sueldo por el mismo trabajo, todo eso solamente se puede conseguir a través de un cambio de sociedad. Nosotros tenemos que luchar por cambiar la sociedad, por, del sistema capitalista a una sociedad socialista. La lucha tiene que ser hombro a hombro, hombre y mujer, para terminar con este sistema opresor. La lucha no es de clases, compañeras. La lucha, la, perdón, la lucha no es de sexo, compañera, la lucha no es de género, la lucha es de clases. Los trabajadores tenemos que terminar con este sistema opresor. Por eso las llamo a organizarnos, a trabajar juntas, porque sin mujeres no hay revolución, compañera, no hay. Bravo, muchas gracias. <laughs> uh, Yeah. Me equivoqué en una parte, pero no sé. Thank you. Um, that was a recorded video from Pamela in Chile, who kind of talked about the women and trade union struggle that's been taking place in Chile. And that was a recorded video, and all of our other speakers are joining us live here today. So our next speaker is from CWI US, uh, the Independent Socialist Group. And it's um, Claire um, Baila, and she is an executive committee um, um, committee member. So I'm now going to pass on to her. Thank you. And uh, for me here in the US, good morning, comrades. Young women and young people around the world are saying that we will not sacrifice our future to capitalist crisis. Because the question is, what kind of future are we facing today? with crises coming from every side. But even before COVID, we were certainly in no stable or adequate situation for young people and young women. Education is, an, is no longer a door opening opportunity for people um, with schools being massively underfunded as part of the attack on public services, bad conditions, um, which become both learning conditions for students um, and teaching conditions for students. And now they're possibly deadly conditions as some countries force a return to in-person schooling. Virtual schooling during the pandemic for those um, who are lucky enough to have access also exacerbates young people's mental health crises, especially as schools refuse to accommodate the pressures of the pandemic on students and teachers and are moving forward with testing as usual. And for young people and young women in college, 
We're facing massive student debt for a degree that no longer guarantees a job with a good standard of living. Many countries are facing pushback in the legal and material struggle for bodily autonomy, including comprehensive sex education, reproductive health care, and access to abortions and childcare. For young women, the question of my body, my choice can determine the direction of our lives, determining if, when, and how we start families and our opportunities in the workforce and to potentially have careers of our own. Poland is rolling back abortion rights despite mass protests several years ago. And in the US, Democrats shut down the idea of universal health care, including um, reproductive health care, in the middle of a global pandemic during their 2020 election cycle. And barring massive protests and an organized movement will absolutely not pass any form of universal health care reforms during the Biden administration. Girls and boys in schools do not have the legal guarantee, at least in the US nationwide, of scientific, inclusive, safe, and comprehensive sex ed in public schools. Young women face unequal uh, economic conditions right as they enter the workforce thanks to the enduring wage gap that capitalist growth has never been able to resolve and is reinforced by the types of industries we have an overwhelming presence in. Many women-dominated women industries are on the front line of the pandemic, as other speakers today have talked about, including nursing, teaching, and child and elder care. New workers, young women moving into the workforce, and established workers both are highly exploited in these caring industries. Many deal with poverty wages, cuts to or a complete lack of benefits, and no protection for workplace harassment unless they are unionized. And, yen, and young workers everywhere are entering a far more precarious job market than generations past. Young people are finding it harder to leave home with, without jobs that pay enough for the astronomical rents we face during this housing crisis. Many young people are struggling with partial or complete unemployment, exacerbated by the huge job losses during COVID. Many young workers and students have had to move back home, whether that, uh, which may or may not be a healthy environment. Gender-based and domestic violence has been on the rise as even more avenues of escape, economic and housing-wise, are being closed off. With worse economic co conditions, many young women are forced to endure harassment and assault at work and at home in order to maintain their jobs and their housing. Of course, this is not an issue exclusive um, to young women. And for every worsening statistic we see for women right now, the rates of job losses, housing risk, and gender-based violence, they are even higher for women of color. And nothing gives today's youth more existential dread than climate change. Will we and future generations even have a livable planet? COVID has been decimating the working class with women on, um, uh, and women are seeing huge portions of the so-called progress under capitalism being undone. And in many ways, because of that, young women are among the most quickly radicalizing of all, certainly in the US and likely around the world. Young women have been found to be most likely to be active in social movements, including Black Lives Matter, environmental activism, Me Too, reproductive rights activism, and gun violence. This future that is faced by us, by young people and young women in a crisis-ridden world means that a fight back has to be organized and we can organize that. We have no faith in, we have no faith in so-called boss girls and liberal posturing. Young women need cancellation of student debt, universal health care with reproductive care, including real abortion rights, similar to those that have been courageously won um, by women in Argentina and other countries. Unions with policies to win us equal wages and to protect us from workplace harassment and a serious climate policy, not more insincere rhetoric from politicians and corporations. So-called progressive Democrats, including popular figures like AOC, Kamala Harris, and Senator Kirsten Sinema, shows that when push comes to shove, capitalist politicians, including the Democrats, will block policies that working people are fighting for, such as a $15 an hour minimum wage, COVID crisis payments and universal health care in favor of passing more corporate bailouts and reinforcing police power. Young women and young women have been playing leading roles in organizing unions and workplace struggles, organizing Black Lives Matter protests and other um, struggles that have erupted over the past several years. Um, 
For example, the West Virginia teacher strike in 2017 um, exploded across the country in a women dominated um, uh, section of uh, um, employment public schools. Um, the St. Vincent locally for the independent socialist group in one of our areas, we have nurses at the hospital called St. Vincent striking tomorrow on March 8th, International Women's Day, although I will confess I don't know if that is intentional. Um, during their contract negotiations where safe patient limits um, is one of several central issues after a statewide referendum um, to uh, legally mandate safe patient limits was defeated in 2017. And young socialist women in ISG, independent socialist group, are playing leading roles in the solidarity campaign we are running to defend local anti-racist protesters from political arrests during the, during the wave of summer protests. Whether it's for our jobs and careers, our families, ourselves, or for future life on the planet, young women have a role to play in organizing uh, the socialist struggle. So uh, if you are not already a member of the CWI and you like the ideas that are being raised in today's rally, you wanna get involved. If you're in the US, check out the Independent Socialist Group, or if you are international, check out the CWI or any of the other sections um, that have mentioned their names on the rally today. Thanks. Thank you, Claire. And I will echo Claire's point that if you are watching us and want to get more involved, then please visit socialistworld.net for contact details as well as reading our materials. And we got a couple of articles up for International Women's Day um, this year from the various different sections. Our next speaker is Laila Masarodi. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, but she is a um, CWI in France. Um, Kosia Revolutionary, who's the General Secretary, and she's also a local government councillor as well. So, Laila, when you're ready. Hello. Yeah, good afternoon, comrades from France, um, and greetings from the Gauche Revolutionnaire. Um, comrades, and women, and especially young women, are joining the fight for their rights and against sexism. And probably a lot of them must have intuition that none of the gain or the victories are won forever. Capitalism is in crisis and is offering a very fragile and volatile situation, very uncertain. That's why we need to be clear and efficient in the fight we are involved in for the women's right and the working class. The task is huge, but it's absolutely vital because it's impossible to be fully in the struggle against sexism and capitalism forever on an individual basis. And it's especially true uh, for women who are still responsible for the main task as childcare and housework. We need to be very, very clear that we need to build a unified movement to defend our women's rights as an essential part of the central fight for the working class against capitalism. At the same time, we have to rebuild our political camp in front of the bosses' political parties. We need a party to defend our rights and our gains. And we need a new one because the former workers' parties were, with their leadership, uh, they failed to defend the interests of the working class and the youth. We, didn't, we need a real party organized for the women and the men of the working class with a clear program which is really fighting cuts, austerity, defending jobs, public services. This means fighting capitalist policies and struggling for their expropriation, the nationalization of the main factories and the planned economy under management and control of the workers in the population. This new mass workers party will defend the socialist program to fight capitalism. At that moment, especially, we need so much a collective organizer we have lack of a collective organizer for the working class and especially for women. That's the role of a party, a place to discuss, decide and organize ourselves. We need this party to become a real political we weapon, able to keep alive our experiences of struggles as a lot of comrades uh, talk about today. And we need also a party to educate new women and men for the fight. This mass workers party will be new also because it will have the constant preoccupation to inv involve women in the party. As part of the working class, a lot of female workers are essential workers 
as is had said had been said um, alongside with women, with the men they do become also essential activists in the new workers party which is aiming to overthrow capitalism and to change society it does mean that a new party is organizing with the idea that women have to be able to build, participate and lead the party. It does also mean organizing public activities, store and sales of the paper when female members are more free, midday, before evening. And some measures, for example, has, um, has been put forward for, with, in, in the workers' movement. For example, the question of a strict parity in the party but in reality it cannot be a real solution nor a guarantee to really involve women in the party building it's the same if the party narrows the role of the women as only the women rights issue uh, it was the case in the former stalinist party they were used to do like that, that the central point for us is the constant the constant worry and willingness to educate, develop, and give responsibilities to female comrades, as well as to all the new members of the party, female and male. We can see new layers of women, especially young women, refusing sexism and rejecting more and more capitalist divided society. They have the potential to develop quickly as female worker, working class fighters. That's why we need to unify our side and as revolutionary Marxists help to launch new mass workers party. At the same time, we are building revolutionary parties. A new mass workers party will be helpful, an helpful lever to challenge the new worldwide situation and to politically arm workers in use. The build of a workers uh, work, uh, sorry, the build of a mass workers party for socialism will also be a strike force to fight uh, to fight back vicious uh, capitalist at attacks it will also be a big step to regroup the most advanced layers of the working class trade unionist fighters workers young female and male uh, fighting against sexism racism and destruction of the planet all united together against capitalist exploitation on a socialist program for a socialist future thanks thank you Marina. Uh... So our next speaker is going to be Claire Doyle, who's the PWI's International Secretariat. Um, Claire, when you're ready. Well, comrades, we've seen a marvellous array of um, fighting socialist women at this rally. And uh, what a way to celebrate International Women's Day worldwide because of Zoom and actually Mark and Engels wrote in the Communist Manifesto that the workers' movement can use the latest uh, developments of capitalism, you know, the techniques for communicating. In those days, it was trains and telegraph, and these days it's Zoom, Facebook, and uh, Google, I suppose, which we can use, and we are using to great um, advantage. Um, and uh, I think... The speakers today have brought home, literally, into our homes how this cruel corona pandemic has struck the hardest of blows at working class and poor women around the world. And they've also pointed to the great heroism and self-sacrifice that women can display once engaged in struggle. Uh, in class-ridden society, they can and do bear great hardships. But I think as the book by our comrade Christine Thomas puts it, it doesn't have to be like this. When women move into battle, little can stand in their way. Look at the women textile workers in Petrograd who celebrated their International Women's Day in 1917 by downing tools and setting off for the center of Petrograd. They were calling on uh, working men and women of other factories, other workplaces to join them they were demanding an end to the war, uh, food for their families, and even the Cossack soldiers on their horses couldn't stop them. And the way was opened by them for the overthrow of the Tsar within just, and then, then within just seven months, uh, the end of capitalism and landlordism in the vast expanse of the Russian Empire was carried through. 
And with that, there were huge reforms brought about by the Bolshevik socialist government in the early days. Nearly all of them were reversed by Stalin at the head of a parasitic bureaucracy that leached off the backs of the workers' state. But also almost uh, indissolubly, indissolubly linked with socialist commemorations of March the 8th, as opposed to the capitalist so-called commemorations. I mean, Women's Day is everywhere now, you hear it. It's got nothing to do with the original idea of the International Working Women's Day. But our International Working Women's Day, as other comrades have mentioned, is indissolubly linked uh, with the figure of Rosa Luxemburg, who was born almost exactly 150 years ago today. I mean, she was born on March the 5th, almost exactly today, 150 years ago. So Red Rosa, as we know, was imprisoned more than once. She was a woman of tremendous intellect and personal courage. She was a diminutive and sometimes frail uh, person, but she was full of life and she hated anything mediocre, even um, people uh, who were a bit mediocre. And she said, they're neither, if they're neither hot nor cold, she didn't have much time for them. And she loved to feel the wind of revolution about her ears. But, um, and she was greatly respected and then deeply mourned by Lenin and Trotsky after the brutal murder in January, 1919, the ill-fated attempt along with her comrade Karl Liebknecht to overthrow capitalism in Germany. Um, and those, you know, pseudo socialists who were responsible for it, had her, her, her body was dumped in the canal. We like to remember the best um, parts of Rosa Luxemburg's life, um, as well as mourning that the, the, the tragic end. But it was also, um, it was in the same month and year as Rosa's birth, that you had the great revolutionary struggle of the Paris Commune, which is actually mentioned in one of the national papers today in Britain. Uh, as comrade Cécile Rambou, uh, from, also from Gauche Revolutionnaire in France, explains in a special article on the CWI's website, women workers showed tremendous courage during the Paris Commune, commune storing, <laughs> I can't get these words, storming heaven, as Karl Marx put it. Cecile explains the unique strides forward that were made in this historic struggle. And she concludes, these heroic women workers forever swept aside the idea that their emancipation could happen outside of the class struggle. And a few decades before that even, it was working and poor women in Paris. This isn't only about France, by the way, but it's a bit more on France. Uh, they played a phenomenal role in the French Revolution against the monarchy and against feudalism at the end of the 18th century. As Peter Taff wrote in his much researched book about these events, this one, The Masses Arise, he says, um, as in all revolutions, women amongst the most oppressed strata were more determined than the men in demanding and sometimes enforcing revolutionary changes. Nor, by the way, did the working class women of France hold back in the revolutionary events of May uh, 1968. And not only did women in the factories and the schools and the hospitals participate, but as is written in a, a little book about those events, um, in the great strike, well, previously in France, in the great strike of 1936, department store workers had refused to wear lipstick and makeup, declaring they were workers, not actresses. But in May 1968, the actresses of the Folie Bergère demanded to be regarded as workers too. They claimed a wage rise um, of something like 50, 50, something like 50 pence, uh, a very, well, a wage rise, uh, better washing facilities, and a right to collective bargaining. And they said, we are not all stupid just because we are strippers. And they 
they sort of tried to prove that. I mean, they proved that by during the strike, sitting down together, playing chess, reading books, singing songs, and holding very serious discussions. And then I think the list is endless of women's involvement in revolutionary upheavals. Uh, just look at the way women have shown no fear in confronting the forces of the state around the globe in our lifetimes, particularly in my lifetime, which is a bit longer than most of yours. We saw uh, during the Portuguese revolution of 1974 uh, with carnations that a revolution came very close to finishing with capitalism altogether in a European country, and that could have changed the course of history. We saw the massive people power movement in the Philippines that ousted, well, women were very much involved. This movement that ousted the dictator Ferdinand Marcos in 1986. Also women were heavily involved in the democracy movements in South Korea, Indonesia, Malaysia. Uh, I saw some of these with my own eyes. Uh, that was during the Asian financial crisis at the end of the last century. And uh, women showed that, I think this has also been mentioned, I think by Issei at the beginning, that women have shown themselves to be fearless fighters during the fight to overthrow uh, dictatorships. Even back in the so-called Arab revolution 10 years ago, and we've seen in Algeria, in Sudan, in the Lebanon, that they've confronted the forces of the state with tremendous courage. Um, we've also seen young women in Hong Kong who've fought tirelessly alongside their, uh, their brothers, risking their lives for five very basic democratic rights denied them by China's puppet government in Hong Kong, actually, by the way, run by a woman which um, you know, proves the point some of the comrades have been making. <laughs> Just because you have a woman in the leadership doesn't mean you have progress for, for women, far from it. Um, Carrie Lam you know, is, just, is carrying out the orders from Beijing. Even last week, um, there were women amongst the demonstrators on the streets in support of the 47 Democrats who are in court. And they, you know, this is against the law. They were risking as well being arrested and tried for sedition. This, this courage, you know, even in this time of, of pandemic and crisis and misery, um, it's hit women worldwide hardest, this pandemic, but it hasn't stopped them from moving into action, showing tremendous courage in all the recent mass movements in India. And young women have been in the front rank, ranks <clears throat> of the mass movements in Thailand against the pampered thieving monarchy. They've even shown that they identify with the struggles in Hong Kong. And, and, uh, and we've seen that again in Myanmar, which I'll touch on in a minute. But in Belarus, women have led mass protests week after week against the fraudulent president of, presidency of Viktor Lukashenko. But really, Myanmar is, is, is the inspiration of the moment where you see um, just having a woman who eventually the head of the government there's no guarantee of democracy and justice for minorities. But the way in which young women have gone onto the streets knowing they may not return alive, but fighting as nurses, doctors, teachers on strike and as students against one of the most entrenched military dictatorships is nothing short of an inspiration for all of us. Then probably the greatest tragedy in all these great upheavals is that no party has been forged, however small, that can give a clear idea of how to bring these brave movements to victory, not just in terms of defeating vicious dictatorial regimes, but to set out on the road of leading a revolutionary movement to end the rule of capital worldwide. And the CWI sees this as the primary task of our era. Without it, the capitalist world will remain an ugly, cruel place with working and poor women, women continuing to be the most oppressed of the oppressed. Their genuine liberation is indissolubly 
tied to ending the exploitation of class by class. And I think I haven't, I don't I have no idea how many minutes I've taken, but I've finished in a couple of paragraphs, um, that we all feel very confined at the moment and straining at the leash to take on the bosses and the fake leaders of the working class. It's been a year of suffering and turmoil. The global epidemic has exposed all that is rotten in capitalist society, the massive gaps between rich and poor and the special problems of working and poor women across the globe. But I think, I think, and I hope you agree that you can feel the anger accumulating. It's bubbling up. It's going to burst through. And I, I hope, I hope that the voices you've heard in this great event today will help convince you to join us if you're not already a member of one of the parties that's affiliated to our international or that makes, makes up a part of our international and join us in the struggle for a better world, a socialist world. Thanks. Thank you, Claire, for that very inspirational contribution. And, um, uh, and if you're joining us, we heard uh, speakers from different sections of the CWI. And our last speaker for today is going to be Helen Patterson, who is from Socialist Party in England and Wales and is the London Regional Secretary, who's going to be our final speaker. Great, thanks, Isai. So today, capitalism and the pandemic means misery for millions of working class people around the world. For women, either our hard won rights and safety are directly under attack or we face the blunt end of economic crisis. You can look at events in Poland where abortion has been effectively banned to see how the pandemic has been used as an opportunity to attack the rights of women. There has been her an heroic st struggle there during the pandemic uh, in Poland, but it was originally outside the pandemic that a movement of women and the working class had been able to force the government back previously on attacks on abortion rights. And now, sadly, those attacks have continued. On the impact of the econo economic crisis on women, many women find themselves confined to the lowest paid jobs on some of the most insecure contracts in society, jobs on the front line during the pandemic, or in some of the hardest hit sectors like hospitality and retail, and we've heard about some of those battles today. And there's many who are fearful they won't have jobs to return to after the pandemic. Or has met, as many working class women have reported, they've been denied the furlough scheme, which is the scheme of people whose industries are closed in the, in the UK at the moment. They've been forced to take unpaid leave to juggle work, childcare and other growing responsibilities during the pandemic ultimately really struggling to get by. Now that's because COVID has helped expose every division, inequality and oppression that exists under the capitalist system, especially in relation to sexism. And it's been a year of lockdowns, but it's also been a year of struggle where people have been forced to organize and fight in defense of their safety, their rights and their living standards. We see that in Argentina, where the hist historic changes have been won to the legalization of abortion up to 14 weeks. But now it's clear that following the COVID pandemic, with mounting government debts, uh, capitalism will expect us, the working class, to pay for the economic effects of the COVID crisis, with working class women asked to carry the biggest brunt of those cuts. Anything from 70 to 84% of cuts that have taken place in the UK since 2010 have come out of the pockets of women. So the question becomes, are we going to accept further attacks on our living standards and services that we rely on? Capitalism has barely recovered from the last economic crisis and now they expect already decimated services and communities, growing unemployment, poverty, and further attacks on services. Well, if anything, 
uh, like the recent events are to go by, the answer is the working class will not accept such attacks. There's cuts being planned today. The cuts that are being planned today will be fought by an emboldened working class movement. And we've already heard about the movement of resistance needed to budget cuts in South Africa, which if unchallenged would leave women trapped in poverty and violent relationships. Here in the UK, there's a movement for a 15% pay rise for nurses, many of who are women. It broke out originally between the lockdowns and is resurfaced now. They are fed up of the contradiction of being called key workers and commended for their hard work on the front line. But when they get home at the end of the week, they're unable to cover the rent and pay their bills. They've been offered a paltry 1% by the government who say they can't afford any more. But this is after a year in which the Tory government in the UK has lined the pockets of their big business mates with favourable contracts throughout the pandemic. Now capitalism may try and coat itself in a veneer of feminism, especially around International Women's Day, which they try and commercialise and neatly package, but all of that is a con. International Women's Day has its roots in socialist and class struggle and every right which women have from equal pay, which is never properly implemented anyway, to reproductive rights, to vital services, legal protections, benefits, housing and more. All of that has had to be fought for and won often on the basis of mass united class struggle. That's the lesson of the recent Glasgow equal pay strikes, which happened a few years ago. Now there have been heroic struggles, which, are, uh, which in the past have won important reforms. But even the services, the rights that we experience today are themselves limited. They cannot alone solve the scourge of sexism in society. And we have to constantly defend the rights we have won from pro-austerity governments. Over a hundred years since International Women's Day was first recognized as a day of protest, the day-to-day -day lives of many women have been improved in a whole number of ways, but sexism and oppression still continue. So we have to ask, on the basis of what ideas, on what program, and alongside what kind of struggle, can we make concrete all the gains that we've won? but also fight to actually end women's oppression in society. That's why we're producing a pamphlet in the English and Welsh section of the, so of the CWI, the Socialist Party, called A Fighting Programme for Women's Rights and Socialism, because the struggle to end women's oppression cannot be confined to, the fight, to a fight inside the system of capitalism. It has to be part and parcel of a struggle to fight for a socialist world. We as socialists do not accept that women's oppression is a fact or inevitable. We believe it's a product of a divisive and oppressive system called capitalism. And the fact is that for 99% of human history, which was not based on capitalist or class society, the systematic oppression of women did not exist. It's this knowledge that gives us the confidence that not only can the rotten system of capitalism be defeated and replaced with a socialist society where the huge wealth and resources will be organized on the basis of the needs and desires of the mass of ordinary working class people and not the whim of the profits of a few and that then the task of dismantling every sexist derogatory idea can be posed and their destruction planned but what does that mean for the working class uh, struggles and women's struggles today. It means that while women of all class and economic backgrounds might face oppression in their lives, the question of defeating sexism is a question of working class struggle for socialism. The most recent mainstream uh, political leader in, in the United Kingdom, who would have done the most to change the lives of women in society today, wasn't any of the Blairite women or men who led various coups against Corbyn's leadership. It was Corbyn himself. 
who even on his limited programme could have transformed the lives of many and many working class women. Look at the issue of domestic violence services and beds. It's a concrete issue that councillors have to make a choice on. They can either defend all services, including vital services like domestic violence and refuges, or they can cut them. Millions has already been cut in the last decade from council's services, including made by many Labour authorities. And even before the pandemic hit, 10,000 women a year were being turned away from such services because of a lack of space. We say any Labour councillor who is balancing their council books with cuts to women's serv services and refuges is balancing their books with women's lives. They are part of the problem. We need political representatives who are willing to take the fight to the Tories, not pass on dangerous and deadly austerity, which is why we need a new party for the working class. And that's why the Socialist Party of England and Wales is taking part in the elections that are coming up in May as part of the trade unionist and socialist coalition to offer a working class alternative to such austerity. Now already in the pandemic, there have been many industrial battles with the trade unions growing both in their women's membership, but also their overall membership. And that is because people have seen the need for that strength and unity which the trade unions can provide. The trade union movement will have a vital role to play in organizing to protect workers on the front line in the pandemic, but also taking up the battles of women workers both inside and outside of the workplace. To achieve this, we need trade unions led by the best socialist and class fighters. And there's a raft of trade union elections taking place here in the UK at the moment, from the NEU to Unison and in the PCS. And we're supporting a raft of socialist fighters standing in those elections. And if you're part of any of those unions, then please try and vote for them. Now we know that sexist ideas exist in all levels of society, but it's perpetuated by a capitalist system along with all the reactionary ideas, the stereotypes, the outmoded attitudes towards gender. But it's only the capitalist class who has a vested interest in maintaining both the economic system of capitalism and all the sexist oppression which comes with it. As socialists, as socialists, we don't seek to share out the misery of poverty, inequality and oppression. We seek to eliminate these by organizing and distributing the huge wealth and resources that exist in society on the basis of, cam of, of democratic uh, working class control. Divided, no one section of the the class or, or, or oppressed groups in society can win this battle. In fact, division is exactly what the ruling class is banking on, that we are forced to fight over crumbs amongst ourselves instead of the huge wealth that they currently control. It will be mass united class struggle against sexism, inequality, and all forms of oppression for a socialist world that will be key. And those are the battles that the Socialist Party of England and Wales, as part of the CGRI, is organising, discussing and fighting for. So if you agree that that is what is necessary to rid the world of sexism, inequality and all forms of oppression, then join with us in the fight for a socialist world. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. And a big thank you to all of our speakers here today and for everyone that's been watching. And as our speakers have said a number of times, women as double and triple oppressed have been at the forefront of many struggles, fearlessly fighting against sexism and the capitalist system itself. Now the CWI was the first to say that the COVID-19 pandemic has been a great accelerator and a revealer. It accelerated the economic, social and political crisis that existed before the pandemic. Working, working class in many countries haven't recovered from the previous economic crisis of 2007 to 9. And this current crisis 
the deepest capitalist crisis since the 1930s and its looming consequences of job losses, cuts to services and increase in poverty means that working class and young people and in that women will be further punished. The pandemic has also revealed who runs the society, who the key and essential workers are. It is those working in healthcare, in teaching, in retail, in transport, etc. In other words, it is us all workers. It is us who control the power to the economy. It is us who have the true potential power. And the economic crisis and the consequences of the pandemic has produced turmoil in every continent. But the biggest crisis facing the working class globally is the lack of a political representation. And the CWI in different sections in different countries are working alongside socialists, trade unionists and activists to build an independent mass workers party capable of providing a decent life and livelihood for the vast majority of the population. Now we say that the multiple crises in, in capitalism, the economic, the social, political and those concerning the environment cannot be solved within capitalism. A socialist alternative is needed. And we say it is a working class of all race and gender who are the force in society who can get rid of capitalism. Now, if you agree with everything that you heard from us and you want a world free from oppression, discrimination, of poverty, exploitation, war and hunger for a socialist world, then join us. Please visit socialistworld.net for contact details of the section in your own countries. But if you're watching this rally today from anywhere in England and Wales, then go to socialistparty.org.uk where you will read more materials, including our recent, um, recent fighting program for women's rights and socialism that has been updated after the pandemic. But also you can find out more about our upcoming meetings and branch discussion. Finally, we also, if you're, um, we also appeal for donation to, uh, to fund the socialist fight, that we are confident that we got the ideas, but for us to take the ideas to the masses, we need resources so, so that we can be involved in the struggles in workplaces, in communities, in campaigns and in mass movement. So you can make a one-off donation or continuous or a um, standing order to us and you can go and you can do that by going to socialistparty.org.uk forward slash donate. Thank you very much for watching us or joining us here today and thank you to all our speakers you have from the various different sections of CWI who are in leading position, uh, leading position here today. So thank you comrades and have a lovely evening.